Today we're going to go step by step on how to go about adding creative lights and more importantly, shadows in Photoshop. It is super fun to do, so without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. The first thing we need to do is to create the light streaks. For it, let us create a brand new layer by clicking on this button. Then select the rectangular marquee tool. You want to make sure the foreground color is white. It doesn't really matter at this point. Now let's make a streak like so. All right, now you can create your own shape. That is up to you. For the foreground color white, press Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill this selection. Then press Control or Command D to deselect. With the Move tool selected right here, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag and make a copy of it, like so. Fantastic so far. Hold the Alt key or the Option key again and make another copy. Do it one more time. You can do it as many times as you wish. Now let's merge it all. Select the topmost layer, hold the shift key, select the bottommost strip layer, not the strip that you're thinking of, press Ctrl or Command E to merge it. Now you can name it Strip. Now it is time for us to define the flow of light. To make sure that we don't lose any details, right click on this layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. Now press Ctrl or Command T, right click on it and then choose Distort. And we can move things around like so. You can get creative right here. Let's say you want to go with it, hit enter or return. Now let's make a selection out of it. Hold the control or command, click on the thumbnail of this layer. Now we have an active selection. Let's turn this off. Click on the adjustment layer icon and create our favorite curves adjustment layer. It created a mask of the active selection we had. So when you take it up, only those areas would be brightened. This is looking fantastic already. Now let's name this layer streak instead. Now of course we want to remove some of the areas like this, some of the shadows, but we don't want to disturb the original mask. What if you want to change stuff later for it? Select this layer and just this layer, press Ctrl or Command G. What is the advantage that we have now? A group can have a mask of its own. So with the group layer selected, if we create a mask right here, and if we take the brush, and if we paint black somewhere like this, if we paint white again, we can bring those back without disturbing this particular mask. So let's take the lasso tool here. And first of all, let's remove this side of it. So I'm going to carefully make a selection like so according to the contours of her face. Now with the selection active, with the foreground color black, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background, press Alt Backspace or Option Delete. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. This looks fantastic so far. Now here's another advantage of masks. Let's select the mask, the first one right here. If you double click on it, properties should show up. If they don't, go to window. You want to make sure properties is checked. Here, just increase the feather. You can change this stuff later. See, it's making it softer. So I'm going to make it 12 pixels. Similarly, for this mask as well, group mask, let's set it to 12. Now we need to create some shadows. But if we start to create the shadows, it will also add that blur. For the shadows, we don't want as much blur because the objects creating the shadow, like the nose or the lips, are very near. And nearby shadows are a bit harsh. So how do we do it without disturbing this mask? Put this as well in a group. So with this group layer selected, press Ctrl or Command G again, and then create a mask for that group. So we have a mask inside of a mask inside of a mask. And here start figuring out areas where the shadows would be. For example, the nose right here with the foreground color black again, press Alt, backspace, gone. Control or Command D. Have a look at it, this looks incredible. I know it's harsh, we're gonna worry about that later. Similarly right here, Alt, backspace or Option, delete. Control or Command D to deselect. If you miss some areas, you can always take the brush tool and erase it with black, like so. Time for us to do the lips. Similarly, let's get back to the lasso tool. On the top of the lips, let's do something here as well. Don't forget the sides of the face. Let's get back to the lasso tool. If you want to add to the selection, you can hold the shift key and add to it. And now with the foreground color black, Alt Backspace or Option Delete. Have a look at it. Control or Command D to deselect. Look at it, it's getting so much better already. Now before we start really softening out some of these edges, let us add a bit of feather. With this mask selected, you want to make sure Properties is open. If it's not, click here or go to Window, Properties or simply double click on the mask. And then these shadows again won't be that harsh like so. So it will have some amount of feather but not as high as 12 that we had before, depending on the light of course. So let's set it to about 4.4. That just works perfectly for these. Now it is time for us to soften where the light fades off, like these areas. So take the brush, decrease the flow to about, I recommend 5 to 6%. And then with black as the foreground color, just start painting 
here. Again, not with a hard round brush. You want to make sure it's a soft round brush and then start painting. See that? See that soft turn? That's what we want. In this case, I would actually paint with white and bring some of that back. Similarly, let's do it here with black on the lips and some of the other areas as well. Now this looks like something, doesn't it? Please and please do not forget the hair areas. Otherwise, it's going to bite you in the back later when you brighten things up or when you color grade. So let's focus on those little details as well. Let's increase the flow to about maybe 12% and then erase some of the additional areas here with black. Now you can even increase the flow to 100 and then take care of some of these areas. This is incredible. Now let's name this group Main Light. Now it is time for us to enhance the dark areas, but how do we do that? We have three masks combining right here. How do we combine all of these masks? Simple. Hold the control or command, click on in here on the first mask. Then hold the shift key, option and command together. Shift alt control on windows. And as soon as you hold that, it shows a cross icon, which means that only the intersection between these two masks is gonna show up. So if I click right now, only the intersection shows up. And again, if I hold the shift, option and command, if I keep holding that and again click on this one, only the intersection shows up. So now we have a combination of all of these masks. Now with this selection active, click on the adjustment layer icon and then create a curves adjustment layer. We want to make sure it's at the top outside of this group. Now if we darken it, it's going to be the same area. We want to darken the other areas. So with the mask selected, press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask. Have a look, it's inverted now. Now let's darken the other areas. There you go, it is looking like something. Now whenever there's a bright light streak hitting the skin, you may have noticed that there's some red around. And why is that so? Because it's full of blood. Have a look at it. Here's a torch, old watchman torch. If I turn it on, place it here. Have a look, there's some red on your fingers that show up. That's because of our blood. Similarly, we need to add that to this one as well. Otherwise, it won't look as realistic. To add it, first of all, we need to create that selection. For it, hold the controller command and click on the thumbnail of this layer. This is the darkening layer. You need to make sure that you name the layers. Now, this is the opposite selection of what we wanted. It's selecting every other areas except for the light areas. So we need to invert the selection. How do we do that? Press Control Shift I, Command Shift I to invert the selection. Now we need to take care of these areas, but don't worry about that right now. Now let's expand the selection a bit by going to select, modify, and then expand. Why are we doing this? So that the red comes out a little bit. So let's expand it by two pixels, hit OK. Now with this expansion and with this selection, click on the adjustment layer icon and create a solid color adjustment layer. Choose something like a bright orange, something like that would do, hit OK. Change the blend mode from normal to overlay. There you go. It adds some red around the edges, but it also adds orange inside the light. We don't want that. So how do we take it away from those areas? Hold the control or command and click on this mask to make a selection of this mask. Now let's contract it by going to select, modify, contract, and we're going to go four pixels contraction because two pixels expansion we already did. To come back two pixels from the midpoint, we need to contract by four pixels. So hit OK and fill it with black. With the foreground color black, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background colors and press Alt Backspace or Option Delete. But nothing is happening. You know why? Because the mask is not selected. Select the mask, Alt Backspace or Option Delete. There you go. Control or Command D. Now we have that red around the edges, which is looking very, very realistic. Have a look at this. This is looking so nice, but the opacity is too much. So let's decrease the opacity and let's set it to about... I would say 26%. Now it might not look like much, but here's the before. See, it's grayish, not looking as right. Here's the after. Have a look at this right now. You can even go higher actually. Let's go 32. That's nice. Now before we head over to the magic of color grading and filters, let's also add some shine to the eyes. Click on the adjustment layer icon and let's create our curves again. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert it first. Let's take it all the way up like Fat Joe. Take the brush with white as the foreground color. Just dab on the opposite side of the catch light. So if the catch light is right here, dab right here like so. You want to make sure opacity and flow are at 100. Similarly, I know there is not much light here, so we can maybe do some dabbing here. All right. Now let's erase the extras. Press X again to toggle between the foreground and the background colors. 
and erase the extras. Similarly, erase the extras from here as well, but I think it's fine. This is going to work for us. You can also apply a bit of blend if by double clicking on the right hand side of the layer and take it away from the dark areas of the layers that lie under it or the underlying layer. Take the slider from left to right. See, it goes away from the dark areas, but it's very, very harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and do it like this to make the transition smoother. Hit OK once you're satisfied and there you have some light in the eyes. Please do not forget to name your layers and I should probably do that as an educator. This one was for the eyes. This is for the red or the orange edge. Now when you start with color grading and filters and overlays, there is really no end to it. But in this case, we need to apply the kind of color grading and the overlays that goes with the overall theme of the image. Right now it's creating that warm light. So we need to create that kind of atmosphere in this photo. With the topmost layer selected, click on the adjustment layer icon and first of all, one of the easiest ways to start with color grading is applying a color lookup table. In here, we're going to go with, of course, my favorite, crisp warm. Adds a wonderful warmth to it, but crushes the shadows. Let's take it away from the shadows using what? Blend if, double click on the right hand side of the left, take it away from the dark areas by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it apart to make the transition smoother. Hit OK. So here's the before, here's the after. That warm look, but not so much. Let's decrease the opacity to about 50. When there's a super highlight hitting your subject, you don't have any details here. Don't worry about having details. We are creating art. So even if you blow out the highlights in some areas, that's fine. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. Take the right slider to the left to make the brights brighter. Have a look, we're losing details here, but this glow, oh my gosh, that is looking amazing. So I'm gonna go a little this much and to give it a final touch, since this is so dark, let's create a point in the middle and just take it up slightly. So that's how to add incredible lighting effects in Photoshop. So here is the before and here is the after. It's crazy insane. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching this one. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.